Hi everyone, I'm going to talk to you about insurance, a help or hindrance to recovery. I'm going to focus on commercial insurance because we've seen a lot in the papers about, well, and, and in research as well, about uh, what's happening in the residential sector and how well EQC and the private insurers have coped. But we haven't seen a lot about commercial insurance, so that's what I'm going to focus on today. So this was a, a research project taken on um, just at the end of last year. It was really an exploratory, qualitative research, just talking to experts involved in business recovery and insurance um, to see how well things went. So I'm going to break it down into two types of insurance for commercial insurance. So material damage, that is building damage, contents damage, and then talking about business interruption. So what losses uh, businesses faced in, in their income. Before I start, I just want to say that overall, the perception of how insurers did in the commercial sector was pretty good. They delivered basically what their policies promised they would. But it wasn't perfect, and there's definitely some lessons to be learned. So I'm going to try and tease out some of those for you today, just giving it a little bit of an overview. So we'll start with material damage. The major gripe that people had with the material damage claims, how well they were handled, was time. So how quickly the claims were assessed and paid out on. Now there was a couple of reasons for this. The first being just a general shortage of resources, human resources. So that's not just the people who are assessing the claims and the loss adjusters, that's the, serv the people who are providing services that feed into the claims assessment and one big one was engineers. Engineers had such a huge role after the earthquakes and um, there just wasn't enough time for them to do all the assessments of the buildings and provide repair strategies and repair costs for, to enable the, um, the claims to be assessed. Linked to that was the way that the insurers managed the claims and in particular manage these additional resources that they needed to bring in from outside New Zealand to help settle these claims more quickly. In particular, um, one of the businesses that I talked to, or actually I think it was a business representative who told me a story about one organisation that had to deal with 15 different loss adjusters. And they felt that every time, because the loss adjusters only came into New Zealand for maybe 90 days at a time, and so sometimes there wasn't continuity between one loss adjuster and the next loss adjuster and businesses felt very frustrated with having to, each time a new loss adjuster came along, they'd have to retell their story and they felt like the clock was starting back at zero again. Highly frustrating. The other thing that caused delays was regulation changes, uh, in particular the changes to the, the building code and the, the questions about whether buildings needed to be built back to 33, 67 or 100% of the building code. And all this just contributed to the delays and the frustrations for business owners. There's also the wording of the policies became a bit of a problem. There were certain terminologies that were used in policies that became questionable. And the example I'll give today is the, um, the phrase, repair as new. So the question was, if there was a crack in a wall and it got an epoxy fill and painted over and it, it looked like new, it actually wasn't new. So there were some um, business owners that had um, discussions with their insurers about whether or not that was considered an as new wall or whether they actually deserved a rebuild. So all this was just frustrating. On the other side of the coin was the business interruption, which was definitely not quite as straightforward as the <coughs> material damage and caused a fair bit more angst. One of the main things that business owners found difficult to understand and weren't aware of before the earthquakes was that a business interruption claim can only, well, in general, can only be made if there is a material damage claim. So there has to be damage to the building, which then has to lead on to loss of income for the business. Unfortunately, in Christchurch, there are a lot of other factors that lead to loss of income, like the cordon or the fact that lots of people left the city. So really, there was a lot of difference between what the customers, the business owners expected out of their insurance and what the insurance policy actually <coughs> delivered. So it's not to say that the insurers did a bad job of assessing them, it was just that the business owners expected a little bit more. They perhaps expected a panacea where insurance was going to completely solve all their ills and pay for everything that they needed after the earthquakes. 
And part of that was businesses understanding the risks that they faced. The way that insurance policies are built before the earthquakes is that if there's damage on the property or to you, you're pretty well set. But if there's damage around you, if all the buildings around you have been demolished or you're sitting in the middle of a cordon, insurance doesn't really handle that very well because generally that's what is considered an uninsurable loss. And businesses, again, just weren't prepared for that and they didn't have that capacity. Another contentious issue around business interruption insurance was depopulation. So for those who are unaware, depopulation is something that insurers used to adjust your, pay your business interruption payment uh, based on the fact that you're probably, after an earthquake, you're probably not going to earn as much as you would before an earthquake or any other disaster. So depopulation might arise from a loss of, um, or people moving out of a city. It might also arise from people changing their discretionary spending, so therefore locals not going and buying things at retail shops or going out and having a drink or a dinner out at a, at a bar. So this was something that businesses weren't aware of, um, they weren't, didn't really agree with, and again it was a bone of contention. And similar to the material damage, delays uh, was considered a reasonable problem as well for business interruption assessments. In particular because business interruption claims could generally not be settled until the material damage claims were settled. So if it took a year or two years to do the material damage claims, then businesses weren't going to be assessed until after that period for their business interruption, or they couldn't be paid out. And that was a problem because generally people only have 6 to 12 months of business interruption insurance. So any losses they face after that, they won't be able to claim out of their business interruption. So they felt that that was unfair, those delays. So those are the general problems we found. And so of course, with any event like this, we have lessons to learn. And I've grouped the lessons into two, two categories. Lessons for the insurance industry and lessons for organisations. Let's start off with the insurance industry. This is just a snapshot of the, some of the um, things we came up with, but these are the main ones. So the first is that the policies really need to be clear. It would be really great to have some standard wordings that is consistent across all insurers and so that we can have a, a consistent interpretation of them after a disaster event. You're probably never going to anticipate all the problems that occur after a disaster or every way that something could be interpreted. So at least if we've got clear definitions and they can be um, confirmed after the event of how they're going to be interpreted. The second is that the insurance policies really need to be tailored. Both insurers and organisations need to understand the major risks that they face and to have the correct policy to cover those risks. Things like if, you're, um, if you've got a tourism operator. Most of their loss is going to be from the loss of international visitors coming into the city and generally that's an uninsurable loss. But is there an opportunity for insurers to, to step in there and offer some cover for those businesses which are specifically going to be at risk from those sorts of losses? The third is that insurers need to try and incentivise <coughs> mitigation. As we've seen in Christchurch, they have been exposed to huge um, risk, a huge risk exposure. So designing policies so that business owners are encouraged to put in mitigation measures such as having a seismically <coughs> resilient building would be a really good opportunity. And we've already seen that happen. We've seen risk priced policies coming out in the sector. Now the fourth is that insurers need to work on their timely and flexible claims management process. A common theme through the interviews that I did were that um, businesses really just wanted to get on with it. They wanted money in their pocket and they wanted to, to move forward. And it was the delays that hurt them the most because they just didn't have, especially small businesses, didn't have access to that, um, that cash straight away. The last thing which businesses found difficult to deal with was the fact that they were unsure whether they were going to get insurance into the future. And while uh, from an insurance perspective that's a very hard thing to promise at any time, let alone straight after a, a, a disaster event, just providing some sort of surety would really help businesses to make decisions more quickly and effectively after an event. And then organisations. So the main things that businesses need to think about is really understanding what, where their risks are. 
particularly in a natural disaster situation. Not just understanding their risks as they stand there in their building with their own supply chains and their business model, but thinking about around them, what's happening in their neighbourhood, are they going to be in accordance? Updating their insurance policies as well, making sure they're up to date and they really reflect their current risks of their business profile. And the last and probably most important thing is that businesses need to really focus on what is the right decision for them. We saw a couple of businesses getting caught up in just trying to get their maximum insurance payout and, and just fighting and fighting and putting all their energies into that when really they probably would have been better to take a step back and say, OK, I'll accept a lower payout if I can get the money now and move on and make some really good decisions and adapt my business. It's just a snapshot of what we looked at with this insurance project. If anyone's interested, the full report is on the website um, and I'm happy to talk to anyone during the break. It's my email.